Hi everyone. Have you ever wanted to get to the real cause of a problem or an issue that you're facing in your business? One of the best ways to do that is with us a, an Ishikawa diagram or a fishbone diagram. This is a technique that was used in the, in the Toyota production system or lean and it's a really, really great way to find the real cause behind the issues that might be happening in your business. With the Ishikawa diagram, we put the problem or the opportunity at the head of the fish. That's why it's called a fishbone diagram as well. There's a, the head of our fish and here are the bones and here's the tail of the fish. And in looking at this fishbone diagram and the problem that we're facing, now we're putting these, uh, the brainstormed ideas into buckets. So buckets such as information. Are we not getting enough information, for example, as we're brainstorming with our team? Or maybe there's something to do with the people. Maybe the people need uh, more, uh, more things or maybe the people are not, don't have the training that they need. Maybe there's something to do with the process. Is it a different process that we need to try? Um, and is it the system down below as well? Is, it the, is there a problem with the system that we're working with? And do we need to change it? This is what we can use to brainstorm with our team. And then when we do brainstorm, one of the best things to do is to take actions uh, so what is the action that we need to take, who is it assigned to, and what is the status of that particular action. And we're going to learn how to create this in Excel today. So let's get into the sheet. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Now the first thing we're going to do is just do up the header row with all of the titles and the information. And we might speed this up ever so slightly as we do that so we can get into the real goods of the Ishikawa diagram itself. Some things we want to capture are the process or the area. And we'll just turn this white so that we can see it. And then we'll give ourselves a box so that we can capture that information. But we also want who has authored this particular diagram. And that way we can capture that before we set up our fishbone diagram. Now the first thing we need to do when we're setting up our fishbone diagram is to insert the shapes that we need. And the first shape we need is just a rounded shape. It's in the flowchart section of your shapes and it's called the delay, the delay symbol. But we're not going to use it as the delay symbol, we're actually going to use it as the head of our fishbone. For our fill, let's just give that a light gray. And for the outline, let's give that uh, the same color as we're working with in our color template and uh, the border a little bit larger as well. We want to edit the text here and this is the problem or the opportunity. If we format this shape, what we'd like to do is just look at the text options. Now, what we can do is actually put this in the middle and the center and maybe make this bold and a little bit larger so that it does stand out. And as you can see, it's now wrapping around. So we just want to reduce the margins on this shape and that way it's just going to stay in the center without wrapping around and we'll be able to see all of the text that we've input. Now the second thing we do, if we copy this and paste this across, we can get rid of the text, but an easy way to do this with the same formatting is to go to Format, edit our shape and change the shape. And what we want to do is just change this for the tail of our fish. We can grab this little section here and turn it around, hold shift and it will turn it around and match up exactly horizontally for us. And now we have a nice tail, but we need to link that together now. And again, we use our shapes and we're going to use just a normal line. What we can do is we can actually connect this directly to our items. As you can see, the connector points do show up. So that's connected nicely. And all we need to do now is just change the weight, make it a little bit larger so that it, uh, it really stands out. And now our Ishikawa diagram is starting to take shape. Now we can copy this line again, control C to copy and control V to paste. And we're going to start putting in the bones of our fish. As you can see, there we go. That fits quite nicely. If we just uh, make, that down, make that go down a little bit and now that's lining up quite nice. Now if we copy and paste that again, we can simply put that, uh, make our second bone, make sure that lines up nicely again. And now we can do the same for our, the bottom bones down the bottom as well. But that's not everything that we need. We need to copy this again and paste this again. And what we need now are some horizontal lines because these are going to be the other, the other types of, uh, of where we're actually labeling 
the ideas that we come up with. Now if we put that, we can actually make that a little bit straighter. That's looking quite good. Again, if you hold shift, that will give us a nice straight line. And all we need to do now is just copy these down, copy these uh, down until we have enough that we can start working with. And if we fill out these out for the rest of our bones, uh, then that's going to give us the bones of our fishbone diagram. Now that we've done that, we need the buckets that we want to brainstorm with. So that, the way we do that is uh, it's a little acronym called PIPS. So it's People, Information, Process and System. And that's one of the, the best ways in your Ishikawa diagram to label those buckets and to, to group those brainstormed ideas into. Now to, to label these ones, we're just going to go to shapes again. Let's choose a nice rounded rectangle and select this in here as well. If we edit our text, this one can be our information. Now the same as we did with our problem or our opportunity, we can format this to be whatever we please. Let's just give it a, a nice a light color, maybe a dark gray, make it a little bit larger. And of course, we have to change those margins so that it doesn't overlap. For our first one, we want this to be our people bucket. So are there any ideas or brainstorming ideas around people? Down the bottom, we just want our process and our system buckets. We'll color that a nice light blue. And system, we can color a little bit differently again. Now we've got our Ishikawa diagram and we can start putting our brainstormed ideas against all of these different areas. But to do that, we're going to need some text boxes so that we actually can fill these items out as we're brainstorming with our team. To do that, we go to insert and insert text box. And if we just uh, create a text box here, now we can start working with this and formatting this in the way that we want. If we edit the text, then we can say, here is one of our idea ideas. And if we just reduce that down a little bit. Now for this, we want it to be in the middle. We can have it over to the left and that's fine. But when we format the shape with our text options, again, we want to reduce those margins where we can. We do want to wrap the text in shape, so that's right. For our shape options, we also want our properties we want our box to resize the shape to fit the text. And that way, if we have more text, it's just going to resize the box for us automatically. Now we don't need an outline for this, so we can get rid of the outline. And now oh, we don't need a background as well, so we can get rid of the background. And now we've got our idea that we can just copy all of these into, uh, into the different bones so that we can easily start writing these ideas whenever we need to. As we're doing that as well, what we can do is just go to view and grid lines because we can actually get rid of the grid lines now, now that we've already got our Ishikawa diagram and it is starting to look really good. As you can see, we now have a beautiful Ishikawa diagram that you can use to brainstorm these ideas with your team. But one thing that's missing is how do we take action on these particular items? And for that, we just needed an action register. And that's also extremely easy and extremely beautiful to create in Excel. Let's select the area below our chart and just color this in so we know what we are working with. Then we can single out the chart itself. So let's select these items here and turn these back to white or even no fill is fine. And let's start putting a border around this so that we know what we're working with. We'll have a heading border and then we'll just separate the numbers here as well. For the heading border, let's color this our beautiful turquoise color just to make sure that that, uh, that looks really nice and stands out. And of course, we'll turn the text to white. For all of our items, we want to put them in the center and in the middle again, and we'll work with the rest of that as we go along. We'll merge these three and we'll merge these two together because this one is going to be the status. This one is going to be the owner, and this one is going to be the action. Now we can select our chart area and if we go to our more borders section, just in our borders, more borders, what we can do is a, a couple of things at once. We'll just select a normal line, do that as a vertical line, 
and a dashed line do that as our horizontal line not diagonal and if we click OK there then that gives us all of the lines that we need but we still need to just merge these together so that they do work with what we're wanting and to do that we merge a couple and then we can copy the rest down very easily same for our owner and same for our status as well and then all we have to do is just add the thick box around the edge again if we enter our actions and our owners then all we have to do is enter the status as well and for the status we're going to use a little trick first of all we just need to set up the statuses so we want not started we want in progress and then we want complete we'll just give those a little bit of a different color so that we know not to mess around with that too much but once we've done that we select all of our status row and we go to data and we're going to go to data validation data validation and we're going to select a list the list source is this particular list that we've just set up not started in progress and complete and if we drag and select all of that and click OK now if we select here we can actually choose from a drop down and this is a really really wonderful easy way to do it but we still want to just give them a little bit of color so that we know if something's not started we want it to stand out to do that we're going to go to home conditional formatting and new rule or manage rules but what we want is cells that contain uh, the cell value uh, equal to and what we're going to do is just do the same uh, cell value as we're taking the values from so let's do our not started one which is that one and let's give that one uh, a bit of a uh, an orangey color and click OK and let's do the rest of those as well manage those rules in progress we can give that a, a light yellow click OK and apply and for our last one cells that contain cell value equal to complete let's give that a nice light green and if we click OK and apply and click OK again now we have some beautiful colors to go along with our actions and all of our action register and this is a great way to brainstorm now you have created an Ishikawa diagram all of your very own that's really usable as well with the action items and the action list I've really enjoyed spending the time with you creating this sheet today and I hope you've enjoyed yourself too I'll see you in the next video bye for now